I'm Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Be inspired to live big and bold and take action to turn your dreams into your reality. Go beyond obstacles and limits of your thinking. Accelerate results to catapult yourself to success. I'm a visibility expert who gives media makeovers to clients, booking them on media interviews and turning their books into international bestsellers with guaranteed results. Join me at DebbieDashinger.com. Dare to do great things. Dare to shine. It's all about you becoming a visionary and leading the path. Welcome to your daring new life. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Very excited for the show today because I've got someone amazing who's going to be on a little later, Susie Pruden. And, you know, I love wine and it's very interesting. I was just, I'm in a coaching program and I was just speaking to my coach this morning. We're in a group call and I was saying how interesting it is when things come to you, very unexpected, but when you open yourself up to do the next right thing, whether you're comfortable or not, it's amazing what comes in. So for me, one of the places I've had to push myself is networking. You know, I'd really rather not go to these, but, you know, he's really pushed me that this is important to broaden my horizon. So I've been going to networking events. I was at the Beverly Hills Chamber. I really was there to talk about what I do in media with books and bestsellers and with getting people interviewed. So that was my jam. But what happened was, My buddy was there, and she introduced me to somebody the moment I got there. And my friend Beth, she's adorable because she made made a mistake. She introduced me as a sommelier. You know, in full transparency, I'm not. However, I am a certified wine specialist. I've taken the test for Italy and for Spain and for Master Spain and, you know, so on and so forth. So that is valid. However, this gentleman heard and automatically took my card and thus, thus theretofore, invited me the week after to come to a wine event in Beverly Hills, 60 people only invited, very high-end wine tasting event. And it included a wine line by John Legend. Did you even know that John Legend was doing wine outside of music and making babies with, <laughs> with Chrissy? So... It was an exquisite day, and the thing that my coach was remarking about today was that it may not be an accident, that because I'm so enthused and passionate about wine, that it may actually be an and that I include in what I do around media and visibility and strategy, that this could be something that I start to offer clients or include in workshops and so forth. So I thought that was really a wonderful point of view, and So it could be for you also, like what are you doing that feels separate that could actually be an and in your life incorporated? A little later, Susie Pruden is here. She's a publisher and a serial entrepreneur. You're going to want to absolutely stay there to hear her. And I want to remind you today about playful manifestation. I love this. I am so down for this. This is so on my bucket list. You know, I was always um, actually very funny. My friends always knew me as very funny. When I was an actress, I did a lot of stuff that was funny on stage and so forth. And it's amazing as I got older how much more serious I got. And I realized, like, that doesn't fully work for me because it's not the full embodiment of who I am. It's not the full expression of who I am. So I've been really mindful to start to be, like, let the, the inner child out. And it's been so successful so far. Like, I've had a lot of good laughs with people, even that I'm getting to know. So I offer this to you playfulness, lightheartedness, joy, the spirit from which all creativity flourishes. And if you want to truly share the abundance of our manifested desires with others, then we really need to create from that place of playfulness within our hearts. When you desire in a carefree state of awareness, there just are no ego demands or feelings or desperation about your desires. So my suggestion, my invitation to you today is to join Nature's Play or Leela, as in termed in Sanskrit. 
we learn to trust the desires and intentions that arise from the freedom and the joy of our true self. So the thought I offer you for today is desire is my creative play. And I have a quote here, which is from Chandogya Upanishad, which is where there is joy, there is creation. Know the nature of joy. When we come back, Susie Pruden, who runs the Itty Bitty Publishing Businesses here, she has appeared on every major talk show. She did a mini series on Good Morning America, appeared numerous times on the Oprah Winfrey Show. She's been featured in major newspapers and magazines, as well as ABC7 Los Angeles and Woman to Woman on CBS Los Angeles. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Radio sells with immediacy. Radio sells everywhere. Radio is the cost-effective medium. Go to ADS at DebbieDashinger.com. Reach is nice, but frequency is better. You're always on the front page with Dare to Dream Radio. It's an award-winning program syndicated on over 60 radio stations. Advertise and sponsor the Dare to Dream Radio Show for optimal advertising results. Email ADS at DebbieDashinger.com. What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The BARS is the first class in Access Consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a BARS session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a BARS class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? When you walk through the world truly being you, everything and everyone is invited to change. Join Dr. Dane here in his unique classes on being you. Whether you've been asking for something greater, looking for a way to change your life, or longing to change the world, Dr. Dane's Being You classes crack open a world of ease, joy, and possibilities. For a list of Dr. Dane here's upcoming classes and resources on being you, go to www.beingyouclass.com. When making the decision to hire a coach, find a pro who delivers. Debbie Dashinger is an expert with an impressive platform that gets results. Let go of issues and shift your life into brilliance. Go to www.debbiedashinger.com. That's D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, debbiedashinger.com. Debbie believes that we are each meant to shine our light and fulfill our unique path. Hire a coach who delivers, www.debbiedashinger.com. Welcome back to Dare to Dream, Debbie Dashinger, and Susie Pruden is here. She's an internationally acclaimed and prize-winning speaker and seminar leader, author, and media personality who has been inspiring audiences since 1965. She's a New York Times bestselling author, fitness expert, hypnotherapist, and success and accountability coach. Susie has written 14 books on physical fitness, weight loss, 
body-mind technology, and mind power, created four videos and dozens of DVDs. She's the creator of Itty Bitty Publishing, and you've seen Susie on Oprah, Good Morning America, and The Today Show. She has professional testimonies from Deepak Chopra, Oprah, and Louise Hay, and the New York Times says, if Susie is talking about it today, the rest of the country will be talking about it tomorrow. You can find out more at ittybittypublishing.com. Susie, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. It's so great to be here. I'm so thoroughly impressed with myself. (laughs) (laughs) I know. What a goddamn bio that is. I'm listening and going, oh, my goodness. I did that. I did that. I did that. And I wonder. And I raised a family in the meantime. I did that. And it's um, it's it's interesting to listen to a bio mm. of yours, I mean of mine. It's like I forgot. It's so true. I I have to tell you that's very common with people who have done impressive things that they are so busy creating, frankly, and generally in this moment that when they hear the wide birth of all they've created and they sit back and go, wow, that's true. That's true. And that, and that it is pretty incredible. And I'm glad you have that moment to actually see and celebrate all that you have created thus far. It's very exciting. And it's, it's funny because we, we are in the moment, those of us who keep creating Mm -hmm. and because I lost September, I kept saying, (laughs) I, I did a seminar this weekend and I kept, one of the people there, I said, well, I just met you last month. And he said, no, you met me in August. And I said, oh, I, I don't know what happened to September. <laughs> just, <laughs> we're already at the end of October. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you are, as I said, busy creating workshops and everything. And just so people understand, because that's really amazing. But I know you're not doing all of that still today. So talk about what is the work that you do today? What are you putting out? What are you generating? Well, by accident, and I don't believe in accidents, my sister and I created a publishing company three and a half years ago, and we call it Itty Bitty Publishing. And 95% of Americans do not read. They're they're too busy on their other stuff. They don't read, but they need information. So we created Itty Bitty Publishing as like the new dummies. Dummies are books that are 350 pages that you have to read with a yellow highlighter, Itty Bitty Publishing are the yellow highlights. We are quick reads. We are each chapter is two pages. Each uh, There's only 15 chapters in a book, and every book is written by an expert in a certain field. And what we want to do is give business owners, entrepreneurs, the opportunity to get their work out there so that they can market who they are and give people the opportunity to learn something in a manner in which they can actually take in the information and they're not overwhelmed by it. And so we created Itty Bitty Publishing and we're having a blast. We've done 50 Amazon bestsellers so far and we have 50 Amazon bestsellers. Yeah, so that really makes you stand out. That makes sense and how unique you are. I just want to add that as somebody who has to, by virtue of what I do for a living, read an enormous amount of books that I... I may not choose, but they're client books or people I'm going to interview on the radio show. When I'm consistently faced with that 250, 350 (laughs) page book, you know, it's daunting. And I have people come up to me at workshops a lot who say, I understand the work you do. Can I give you my book? Can I send you my book? And I have to say, no, with integrity, I literally don't have time. So if all the people's books I have to read went to Itty Bitty, that would make my life a lot easier. Let I'm going to you. send you all my books now, all my Itty Bitty <laughs> books, so my authors can be interviewed. No, I'm joking, but uh, it, 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 it is daunting. And people come up to me all the time and say, would you look at my book? And I also say, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I can't. And they'll always tell me, yes, it's a good book. And I say, I'm sure it is. And I don't have time. And if I take it from you, and you you will expect me to read it, and I will disappoint you, and I don't want to disappoint you. So thank you, no, I can't take your book. And they are disappointed, but I'd much rather tell somebody up front, 
I'm sorry, I can't do this, then truly disappoint them by not doing it and then having them see me a year later and said, did you read my book? And I'm not going to lie to them. So This is I, actually I, huge. I just want, because there are people out there who are probably identifying, who are saying, eek, you know, I've done that. Wow, I had no idea. I want to riff on this because I think this is so important from your perspective as an expert doing this. Talk about, Susie, what are aspects that you as an expert see that frustrate the heck out of you? Because you see <laughs> authors <laughs> authors want to be authors. They're doing this, and it sabotages their success. So what are three aspects? One aspect is they don't listen to the editor. Mm. And an editor will tell an author, this works or this doesn't work. And the author, if they argue with the editor, the book isn't going to be as good as it would be if they listened to the editor. And that's huge. And we have that all the time. And we have actually refused books when we have turned books away when authors will not listen to the editor. Because, as, And I learned this the hard way. I learned this from my agent. When I uh, submitted a book and she contacted me and said, you have to change this, 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 and this. And my ego did not like that. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of my ego, which is the most important thing you can do, just get out of your ego. You need it, but not when it's, you have to listen to your agent. And I realized my agent knows the market. I don't. And when I listened to my agent and made the changes, we had a better book. So that's my first one. What's another one? Um, when people hand me a book and say, please read mm -hmm. my book. I can't. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. the, another pet peeve, and, and this is funny because my, my coach is always saying, your book is your business card, and I say your book is your business builder. It's mm. not a business card. Love that. Can you explain that a little more? Well, people ask me all the time, how quickly will I earn the money back that I've just spent? <laughs> yeah, right. Writing this, paying you to publish my book. I said, you're not going to earn your money back with book sales. It's just probably not going to happen. And they don't want to believe me, but it's true. You're going to earn your money back by turning your book into a marketing tool, getting yourself on radio, television, getting yourself booked all over the country. I have an author right now. I think he's in Australia. We just got a, um, a post on our Facebook page. He's in Australia. His book has taken him to Dubai, to England, to France, and all over the United States, and he is using his book as a marketing tool. He's grown his business from $100,000 a year to three-quarters of a million a year in three years using his book as a business builder. He understands the concept, he knows exactly how to do it, and he listens to us. And mm -hmm. so that's another pet peeve. You're not going to make your money back. And being a bestseller is not the answer. It's nice, it's wonderful to have in your back pocket, but it's not the end-all, be-all. Another pet peeve is once the book is done, authors think they don't have to do anything else. That's Hello. When the work. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's when the work really begins. Mm. And you know that. I mean, yes. It, it, think about the books that you've done. If you've just said, okay, now my book is done. Okay, where's everybody? Well, they're not there because you're not there. You have to get out and you have to push. And I'm so glad you're networking because that's one of the things I tell mm. my clients. It's belly to belly. That's hmm. where you're going. That's where the. That's really where the meat is. Yes, you can do seminars, webinars, all that kind of stuff, but it's really belly to belly. There are gems in those um, networking opportunities. And do you do you have to like it? No. Hmm. You just have to do it. 
That's awesome. And I, thank you so much for, that's exactly right. You don't have to. And, and, you know, chances are, though, when you run toward that which you resist, there's actually gold there right? There's actually such a reason why you need to do it. Resistance is an illusion. Fear is an illusion. Run into it. Trust me. You don't have to know up front. You'll figure it out. Just do it. I am total agreement. And I I would just want to point out what Susie was saying about the after of a book, because the statistics show that 95% of a book is what happens after. It is the marketing or the not marketing. 5% is writing the book. And for those of you who have written a book, that's painful to hear, right? Because it was a big deal writing your book. Yes. But that's the truth. You really need a marketing plan post-writing. Yes. Now, when I was writing in the 70s and 80s, my publisher would send me on book tours, and so I would do 22 cities in six weeks. That's exhausting, but that's what got me a bestseller, because at, when I was doing that in the 70s, you actually had to walk into the bookstore and buy the book in order for the book to be a bestseller. Today, you don't have to do that. Uh, today, it's different. It's just plain different. But when I did it, that's how we did it. It's And if if I stopped then the the book sales generally stopped although i had two books that went on to sell i had i had one book that stayed in print for like 8 years that's my best seller that was it was Susie Prudence spot reducing and mm-hmm. here's the thing i was in the right place at the right time with the right topic mm-hmm. luck has a lot to do with it and being in the right place has a lot to do with it and i had a famous name and then i have a famous program and so there's a lot that goes into it that isn't just the book. And I, a lot more. I want to go back to it. Can I just skip here? Because you said something earlier that I really I want you to talk about a little bit. Because you said somebody that you know says it's a book business. A book is a business card. And your feeling is not that, that it's actually a business builder. Is that yes. correct? Correct. So talk about that. So what do books provide as a builder that you think it's important for people to become authors? All right. With our itty bitty program, every single book is 15 chapters. Every chapter is two pages. So someone can take their book and create 15 webinars. They can create a YouTube channel and create 15 topics that they talk about every week. They can create a podcast and c- talk about 15 different things that they do from their book and start building a following. They can, um, what, what Anthony does, he's the gentleman who's in Australia right now, he's in sales. And mm-hmm. so he talks to sales, he teaches sales people how to sell. And he's brilliant at it. And so in car dealerships, which is his main target audience, they bring him in to do a one-day program. And then from that one-day program, he'll sell a one-year program. So he'll go in and make $1,500 doing a seminar, and then they'll hire him for me for a year, and he'll get a $60,000 contract. So he is building his business by using his book as a marketing tool. That's one way to do it. We have people who create um, certification programs. I have one author. This is a wonderful story. And uh, she didn't know what she was going to write about. I met her at a networking, belly to belly, networking meeting. And she wanted to write a book. And I called her. She lived in Washington State. And I said, what do you want to write about? And first she told me who she was, that she was a full-blooded gypsy, that she was a disabled vet, that she was a spiritual teacher and a marijuana dispenser. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I said, what do you want to write about? And she said, I don't know. Mm. Spiritual coaching? And I said, what's the low-hanging fruit? Mm. She said, I don't know. I said, it's pot. Mm-hmm. Why don't you write the book, Your Amazing Itty Bitty Marijuana Book, 15 Ways to Use Cannabis for Healing? She said, how did you do that? I said, that's what I do. And mm. then I said, and then you're going to write the book, 15 Ways to Talk to Your Kids About Cannabis? Then Mm -hmm. you're going to write the book, 15 Ways to Use Edibles Correctly. And then you're going to create a certification program to teach people how to teach people how to use cannabis correctly. She said, I want to do Mary Jane parties. I said, okay, 
all of your graduates from your certification program will conduct your Mary Jane parties. And so she did. And she called me one day about eight months later. I'd already done her cannabis coaching program. I learned a lot. It was fascinating. And she start, she was crying on the phone. And she said, these are happy tears. I said, what happened? She said, I just came from a hemp fest, and I sold 62 people into my coaching program and made $92,000. Wow. Oh but my God! I so, like the most uh, amazing advice she's probably ever gotten. I hope you got a big ass gift out of that, <laughs> beyond what she was doing as a client, because that's big time. I mean, you open doors that I'm clear because I also can see what's happening with pot and cannabis and oils and stuff. Without a doubt, it's so big right now. So you really got her on the success path. And this was before it started to be as big as it is today. Mm. She, so you know she lucked, she lucked out and, and, and she travels now all over the place and is presents and talks and, and she has this huge business because of a literally because of an itty bitty book as a business builder and what happens here's the thing I don't like about using it as a business card when someone hands me a book as their business card I don't want it I don't, what am I going to do with it? Where am I going to put right. it? Right. <laughs> like a business card is enough to keep somewhere, but if you have books as a business card, like you need a storage facility. Yeah. And you're not going to look through them all. It's impossible. No. Gosh, this is so important. It really is. So all of you, God bless you if you've written a book. Please know that that's not the entree to work with most people who are professionals in the business. It actually is a turnoff. You need to find the way to have the conversation, the to open up the door to actually talk about what it is you need and want and what you're trying to create and just allow the professional like Susie to get you there. This is for sure. I it's know this. so much fun. Mm-hmm. So much fun. And so we're taking a break, but we're going to have more fun when we get back because I cannot wait. Susie's going to tell us a little bit about her path, where she's <laughs> been, where she is now, some of the lessons learned. And she's going to tell us a little bit about how success is an inside job. You're listening to Dare to Dream Radio. Go get your free report on publicity, how to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media. That's at debbiedashinger.com. That's D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. How to become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media. My gift to you. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, host of the syndicated award-winning radio and podcast show, Dare to dream. Do you have a dream inside of you? Dare to Dream is all about making people successful in a changing world. And the mantra is dare to create your dreams into your reality. In fact, dare to live bigger than what seems possible because you can. We're live every Wednesday at 12 Pacific time on BBS radio. You can also listen on iTunes, Player FM, iVooks, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn Radio. Subscribe and leave us a five-star review. As Justin Shank, our subscriber, wrote, an absolute rock star host who gets great conversation from her guests. Motivation, inspiration, and insightful advice in this Do Not Miss Dare to Dream podcast. We look forward to connecting with you live every Wednesday. Dare to Dream. Hi, it's Debbie Dashinger from the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast, heard live every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. You're invited to receive a visibility strategy session. It's a call and it moves your business forward. The session helps you get clear on what's holding you back and uncover how to better reach your clients. We're accepting applications, so send your interest to Dare to Dream Radio at gmail.com dare to dream radio at gmail.com if you feel like moses wandering around the entrepreneurial desert imagine how helpful it will be to have a 45 minute call with a visibility media expert if you're ready to get direction for books web presence bestsellers media and interviews get your visibility strategy session today Put the words visibility strategy session in the subject and email dare to dream radio at gmail.com. 
What is forgiveness like in your life? Is there someone right now that you need to forgive? Project Forgive is changing all that, teaching you how to skillfully forgive and finally get that freedom. Go to www.projectforgive.com. It's time you freed yourself and freed your dream. You're listening to Dare to Dream. What if there's nothing wrong with you? What if you're far greater than you've ever given yourself credit for? What if it's time to know the gift and the contribution you are to the world? and to like yourself a lot more. Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. Asking questions opens doors to infinite possibilities. And it's not about finding the answer. It's about being the question, always. What I'm inviting you to step into is something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Gandhi, Picasso, and Aristotle all knew to be true. What if no question is too big or too small? What if anything is possible for you? What if together we could create a kinder, gentler, happier world? Is now the time? Go to beingyouclass.com and sign up for a free video series, My Gift to You. beingyouclass.com What if you, truly being you, are the gift and change this world requires? beingyouclass.com if you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream Radio, and I'm interviewing Susie Pruden. Her website is ittybittypublishing.com. So Susie, for sure, your trajectory is fascinating. You had a television career once upon a time. You were in all the hot shows and coaching major celebs. You were famous. And then I understand that you lost it all and then some. Can you talk about what happened? That's a, that's actually one of my favorite stories, and people are always surprised when I tell it, because it could be, if I let it be, the most horrific, embarrassing story in the world. Eight months after Oprah, I was homeless. I lost everything. And people say, how did you do that? I said, I was stupid. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are into a blame game. It's so-and-so's fault. I, You know, if I'd only known this, if I'd only known that, if someone hadn't told me this, that was my fault. I was stupid. I was arrogant. I was, um, I thought a lot of myself. Um, I tell people it's a joke that I'm a Virgo. I'm born 12 days <laughs> late. The universe is protecting everybody because if I'd been a Leo, I'd been much more insufferable than I already am. And it, for me, though, it was a, an opportunity, it was a major opportunity to really look at myself, my beliefs, my judgments, and to start to uh, um, appreciate my gifts in a different way and not take things for granted, which I had done. Uh, I was, I think I was without a home, which means that I I had, this is funny, I am was a famous person. Mm-hmm. I was a celebrity. So here I am. I'm totally broke. I have all my stuff in storage in Woodland Hills. And my first night out, my second night out, my first night out, I stayed with friends. My second night out, I'm staying at the La Jolla Hyatt. <laughs> all expenses paid because I'm speaking there the next day. Wow. Because I'm this famous person who's broke. Mm. And the reason I could have a second glass of wine was because I wasn't paying for it. And the hotel, you know, the event was. That's how I lived for ten months. The the uh, week after, let's see, I was in at the at the Hyatt for two nights, and then I went off to Rancho La Puerta for a week because I was teaching there. And so my homelessness went from the Hyatt to. Rancho La Puerta, and then I went to Maui for two weeks because I was teaching there. And that's how I did. I did have some scary moments and some really scary moments when I had no money and I didn't know what I was going to do, but I always figured something out. And and I was having dinner with Gary Zukov one evening because we were speaking on the mm. same stage up at um, Principia in Northern California. And we were at dinner. We were the only two at dinner. And I don't know how we got on that topic. And he said, well, what did you do? How did you do it? And without thinking, I said, I leaned back into the arms of God. Hmm. And I really do believe that my trust in the universe 
and my trust that everything is going to be okay, that this is my opportunity, not my demise. This is what's going to make me the better person that I need to be to do the work that I'm here to do going forward. Because I had that belief, I was always led to the right place. And it was a magical journey. Totally shaming. I was Mm -hmm. mortified. Here I was, a celebrity. Here I was, this important person that people used to know who I was on the on the street in New York. Um, I mean, when someone calls across Sixth Avenue and says, "Hi, Susie Pruden, you've just come off the air doing a live show on NBC," that's very heady. Mm. This is big. I and thank you so much for even saying that word. Shame is huge. I mean, painful. What in the world did you do? Like, how did you get through that to the other side? Because it could stop you in your tracks. Well, I had, it almost did. And I had to make up my mind. And it was, there, there, there was a moment when I had to make a decision. And, you know, people see homeless people on the street all the time. They don't know what their journey was to get them there. These are not bad people. These are people who somehow made a decision to take a left turn or a right turn, and it got them where they were. And and some people know how to get back. Some people don't know. Some people want to get back, and some people don't. And there was a moment when taking a turn to in, in, the, in the different direction that I took the turn would have taken me to the place where I would have been a bag lady. Wow. And I had a choice. And I really and I really thought about it, mm. and it was like, if I just let go, I'll never have to worry about a bill, my reputation, my anything again. I can just disappear. No one has to know where I am. I won't have any responsibilities. I'll just go away. And there was a moment when I almost took that turn. And then there was a piece inside of me that said, no, get back. And I knew it was going to be a lot of work, and it was. I knew it was going to be hard, and it was. And I had to create a mantra. And my mantra at the time was, what do I have to do to make money today? Mm. What do I have to do to make money today? What job do I have to do? Who do I have to talk to? Who do I have to call? What kind of, I'm very, as you know me, I'm extremely creative. So I created all kinds of programs for people on, this is so funny, on how to live their life in a perfect way. Meanwhile, I'm <laughs> broken homeless. And, but it worked. And I started helping a lot of people. Hmm. And then I started following my own advice, whatever you, you know, as a, as a, as a teacher and a healer and a, all, all the things that I do, I know that when a client comes to me, it's my mirror. And so if someone comes to me with a problem, I listen very carefully to what I tell them. Mm, that's so deep. I, I I, am just blown away by that one piece. You know, the choice got you out and real clear direction, like just for today. Where are the opportunities? What can I do to create money? I have to tell you that I was um, putting together an anthology book, and I um, I really wasn't doing all of what I needed to do to get the word out, which you know meant speaking on stages and stuff, and it was not going anywhere quickly, and I had to call it. I was either going to have to call up those authors and say, I'm really sorry, but here's your money back. It's it's not going to happen. And I was about to do it. And this thing came up inside of me like, hell no. And I got on the phone and I called every single person that had connected with me for something in my business over that past year. And it was such a huge lesson for me because by the end of 36 hours, my book was full of authors. I had to step in for the universe to bring me the right people and for all those hell yeses out there. And it was about what is it going to take for me to make this work and how can I line up to do it? What do I have to do? And is that your big proponent about success being an inside job? Yeah. Well, you have to believe in yourself as well. And even in the depths, the darkest periods, 
I know truly how brilliant I am. Mm-hmm. And I know the work that I do is God-given. And so I do believe in myself. That's where success is an inside job. And you have to constantly reaffirm yourself. If it, And I, I talk about how important the way you think is. And if you're constantly beating yourself up, making yourself wrong, and looking for all the terrible things that you somehow, somewhere, think somebody told you and you believe them, if you're focused on that, you're going to get to be right. But if you start to focus on, and, and sometimes it's a huge stretch to say, I'm really terrific. And sometimes people get annoyed that, oh, you think you're a big deal. Well, I know I'm a big deal. Mm. And uh, I also know that I've made mistakes, and I'm I'm and I'm willing to own them. But if I lived, if I lived in that place of I'm bad and wrong, I would never have been able to pull myself out of it. Well, I'm so glad you did, and I'm so glad you're here. Yay <laughs> for the choices you made and the wisdom that you implemented. Well, folks, we're heading to a break, and when we come back, we'll be talking to Susie in the last segment about what does it take to be a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> Subscribe to Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. I'm on iTunes and Spreaker and Stitcher. This channel, obviously, my website, YouTube, tune in many places and spaces. You can connect with this show. Please give a five-star review and leave a review because it counts. You'll bring the right people to the show to listen as well. Stay right there. I'll be right back. Hi, it's Debbie from the award-winning Dare to Dream radio and podcast, heard live every Wednesday at 12 noon. Question, do you want to be a published author? If so, you can apply to write a chapter in the new anthology book called I Am Still Here. Author spots are available to be featured in this book. Just go to debbied.net slash anthology. That's D-E-B-B-I-D. Dot net slash anthology. The compilation book is going to receive global distribution and it's going to be launched to a guaranteed international bestseller. I Am Still Here Anthology is seeking men and women authors. First time writers or seasoned authors can apply. Go to debbied.net slash anthology. Become a published bestselling author this year. debbied.net slash anthology. Hi, it's Debbie Dashinger from the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast, heard live every Wednesday at noon Pacific time. You're invited to receive a visibility strategy session to move your business forward. The session is going to help you get clear on what's holding you back, uncover how to better reach your clients. Send your interest application to this email, dare to dream radio at gmail.com. If you feel like Moses, wandering around the entrepreneurial desert, imagine how helpful it will be to have a 45-minute call with a visibility media expert. Ready to get clear? Ready to get direction for books, web presence, bestsellers, media, and interviews? Book your visibility strategy session today. Email daretodreamradio at gmail. Dot com and put the words visibility strategy session in the subject. What books are you reading? Are you ready for a must read? Winner of the Inspirational Book of the Year Award and International Best Sellers, Dare to Dream, This Life Counts by Debbie Dashinger, as well as the acclaimed Wisdom to Success, The Surefire Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams. Buy the books from Amazon today. U.S. Book Review and Writer's Digest said these are critics' picks by Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, and Wisdom to Success contain gems to live your life by. Have a dream but not clear how to manifest it? Feel like the rest of the world was given the secret to achieving their dreams except for you? This acclaimed book, Wisdom to Success, The Surefire Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams, was written for you. Author Debbie Dashinger received the Inspiration Book of the Year Award and Critics Pick from U.S. Book Review and Writer's Digest for Wisdom to Success. It's a life-changing read, available at Amazon. 
What is forgiveness like in your life? Is there someone right now that you need to forgive? Project Forgive is changing all that, teaching you how to skillfully forgive and finally get that freedom. Go to www.projectforgive.com. It's time you freed yourself and freed your dream. You're listening to Dare to Dream. If you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream Radio. I'm interviewing Susie Pruden. You can find her at ittybittypublishing.com. Susie, I want to know, in your daily life today, is there a ritual that you practice? Is there a practice you practice daily that keeps you grounded and centered? I'm going to make you laugh. I pet my cat. Oh, I, I like it. I'm, I'm so in love with my cat. I don't have a spiritual ritual. I have a spiritual belief, and I trust it, and I think... I think getting up is the most important thing in the morning. Getting up and getting active and doing what you need to do and say, okay, what do I have to do? The bottom line is, I think my ritual is, what do I have to do today? Mm-hmm. What do I have to do today? And I really do live in the moment in today. And I look at my calendar and I say, what do I have to do today? And then I set the schedule and I do it. And as a serial entrepreneur, what happens for me is that I'll get to a place in a business, like when I was a fitness expert, I was one of the top fitness experts in the world in the, in the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s. I'm going to blow my nose, excuse me. Um, 70s and 80s, I'm covering for you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know, on radio, never have silence. <laughs> no, what I did, they didn't, they could hear, my, hear, me, hear me blow my nose. Um, so... What happened in, all of a sudden in 1983, I could not do my business anymore. I just couldn't do it. I was done. And I sold it and I retired at the age of 40. But um, I kept making things up, doing new things. And no matter what happened, I kept making things up. And I think as a serial entrepreneur, we can't, we can stop for a moment, but we really can't stop, stop because our minds keep building new ideas. I mean, I just got another idea the other day, which I implemented. It's going to be a whole new business. Really? Yeah. (laughs) And it popped popped into my head, and I went, oh, that's a good business. And so I'll do it. That's what happened with with, um, Itty Bitty Books. It it was an idea that my sister and I got during uh, the holidays um, three and a half years ago. What happened was she took my name off the the title of a book and put uh, You're Amazing instead of Susie Pruden. And I looked at it, and after my ego recovered, I realized it was a million-dollar business. And eight days later, we we were not only in business, we had our first author. So my my latest, um, then I have legacy books because some people don't want to write itty-bitty books. They have a bigger story. And my sister doesn't like to edit big stories, so we have a, a new editor, and now we're doing big stories. And so you can write a big book with Itty Bitty Publishing, although it's Legacy Press. And then the other day, I, I keep telling people to do certification programs. I mean, I work with geniuses. They've got genius programs. Create a certification program, and they don't know how. So I created a program last week on becoming a certified certifier. So you can certify. so silly. But it's a, it, but it, I've already got two clients, and it was just an idea that came out of a conversation when somebody said, well, I don't know how to certify people, and I said, well, I'll teach you. Bingo, new business. And for a serial entrepreneur, we, we just make stuff up and throw it against the wall, and if it sticks, we do it, and if it falls down, we walk away and <laughs> try something new. That is so great. Oh, my God, I love that advice. It's like, totally, just do it. <laughs> and uh, so, Susie, where can people connect with you? Where I know you do mastermind programs and all of that. What, what URL should we use and what's possible? The best way to contact me is to go through ittybittypublishing.com. There is, a, there is a, a place there where you can put your name, your phone number, your email, and I will contact you. It's itty, I-T-T-Y, bitty, B-I-T-T-Y, publishing.com. Mm-hmm. And the other way is to just call me on the phone, 310-640-8885. 
310-640-8885. And if you are somebody who has an idea and you want to know what to do with it, let me see if I can help you. Mm, nice. Well, this is Dare to Dream. So, Susie Pruden, what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I would like to have a, uh, I'm going to do it with a podcast, but I would really love to have a TV show where I bring people on who have great ideas and they can talk about their great ideas and people can resonate and either just express who they are, their brilliance, and um, be out front, experience the kind of stuff that I've experienced. It's so much fun. And I'd like to give other people the opportunity to have the kind of fun that I've had. Mm, Nice. I am curious. I find that in my life, certainly, every year has a theme to it. And there's something I'm supposed to do or learn or become or open up to or surrender to. It's all over. But every year seems to have that theme that shows up over and over. What is that for you this year? What is your important lesson this year? Stay in the game. It gets hard. There are times when, and anybody in business knows this, it gets hard. And you want to put it down and you want to say, I just want to crawl into a hole and disappear. And when that happens, that's the time when you have to really say, okay, what do I have to do? It's the same thing. What do I have to do? Because sometimes it gets very hard and sometimes it gets lonely. Mm -hmm. And you have to say, okay, what do I have to do? And then do it. Don't be afraid. My my motto is say yes and figure it out. And I've done that since <laughs> my first business. Figure it out. Just figure it out. Sometimes you'll make mistakes. Sometimes you'll have successes. Uh, I do believe that success is more fun. But your mistakes really teach you. And if you will allow yourself to learn, then the mistake is gold. It's mm-hmm. absolute gold. My having lost everything and been homeless for 10 months... That was gold for me. That was absolute gold, and it makes a good story. And what, so, I love that you referenced that again. Uh, what was the? I know you talked about how you got out of it, but what was the thing that has totally changed since then? I'm um, clearly you've never gone back. That's never happened again. So something happened that was a huge shift. I'm very careful where my mind goes. That was the biggest shift. I was extremely judgmental, and I had to, and I was born judgmental, I'm a Virgo, and, um, but I had to, I got to experience, and this is a good one, and I get to experience everything I judge. Mm-hmm. Got so, it, like shadow. Yeah, it's it, big time. And, you know, I would judge people's cars, and if I didn't think it was the appropriate car, um, there was a judgment. I mean, that's really stupid. And so I ended up driving a truck for eight years because <laughs> I didn't have a car. And it was my ex-boyfriend's truck, and he gave it to me. And so, you know, I used to belong to the Inside Edge. That's where Mark, Victor, and Jack started and Barbara D'Angelis. And we would meet every Tuesday morning at 6.30 in the morning. I have to apologize there. There's a gardener outside um, if there's noise on the radio. And we would meet at 6.30 uh, once a week at the Beverly Hills Hotel, dressed to the nine, 6.30 in the morning, dressed to the nines. It was very fancy, very, very fun group. And I would arrive in my truck. Now, that takes a bit of... I had to pretend it was okay until it really got to be okay. So that was a lesson. And, and today, when I when I when I judge somebody for no reason just because my mind goes there i look at it and i have to laugh and i and i remind myself careful what you're judging careful what you're judging because you're going to get to experience it if you judge it so for for you listeners who are wondering what that means is if you have a judgment about something you can bet the universe is going to give you the opportunity to live it be careful what you judge Man, and I'll add to that, and be careful what you say, never. 
That will <laughs> never happen to me. I'll never be that or do that because I can tell you the universe definitely had the last laugh with me several times. I'm like, what? Yeah. I've certainly, that's been my shadow a lot. It's like yeah. the never became, uh-huh, going to happen. So, right. you know, get real humble, honey, because there is no never here. There's choice. That's cool. But there's no never in your universe. You're going to attract it if you say never and have that resistant energy. And so what, brilliant. What, one more thing I would like to add to it is whatever you think, you get to be right. I'll repeat that. Whatever you think, you get to be right. So what do you want to be right about? Hmm. What do you want to be right about? Thank you. We, Thank you, yep. Susie Pruden, so much for coming on and sharing your amazing brilliance today. Thank you for inviting me. I end today's show with this quote from Stephen King. To write is human. To edit is divine. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it, too. Next week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Melinda Whitstock. She's a four-time serial entrepreneur, a tech visionary, and award-winning journalist. You're going to want to tune in. She's super bright. It's going to be a great conversation. You can subscribe to my inspirational YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. Remember, get your free publicity report at debbiedashinger.com. Thank you so much for joining today. The secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. To contact the award-winning syndicated Dare to Dream radio show, go to DebbieDashinger.com. Keep your excellent feedback and comments coming. Your host, Debbie Dashinger, is an expert at goal achievement, a media personality, an international best-selling author, and a keynote speaker. Debbie leads high-quality teleseminars on how to achieve goals, how to be a self-published best-selling author, and how to get booked on radio. All classes are at DebbieDashinger.com. Debbie's best-selling books are Dare to Dream, This Life Counts, sold on Amazon, and her second book, Wisdom to Success, The Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams, sold online at all bookstores. Tune in again to hear the next inspiring interview guest who has turned their vision into a successful reality. Want more support in making your dreams come true? Go to DebbieDashinger.com. That's www.debbi.com. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com. You'll see videos, MP3s, archived interviews, and amazing products sharing the secret steps to making your dreams come true. Remember to dream big with every expectation that your dream will become real. Dreams are free, so free your dreams. What do you dare to dream? I'm standing now, waiting for my time to be all that I can be. It's so easy to forget, life is in my hands, and I can change it if I want. Nothing's impossible.